Welcome back, folks, to the WP Tonic Show. This is episode 337. And to say that I'm excited with our guest would be an understatement. I'm a bit of a fanboy. It's one of the pleasures of this show, folks, after you've done so many episodes and you've got a bit of credibility. You get great guests. Uh, and I've got um, Shane Conwell on the show. Uh, Shane, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes, uh, I'm so excited to be here. And um, yeah, my passion is helping people build their influence, income, and impact with online video. Uh, any platform at all. We're on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter. Uh, you know, video is, is really everywhere. Facebook, but then of course YouTube and just came out with a new book, YouTube Secrets. And I think that's important, especially if you've got a course, a membership site. Um, eventually you're going to get people into your community, but you got to sometimes get awareness. And I think that there's so much opportunity for everybody listening right now to generate awareness. Uh, if you will get more leads, get more customers, um, and really make a greater impact. And so I'm excited to be on the show today. Thanks for having me. Oh, such an impressive intro. Uh, um, Cindy, uh, my great co-host, would you like to quickly introduce yourself to the listeners and viewers? Thanks. Thanks, Jonathan. Hi, Sean. Thanks for coming and joining us today. Um, everyone, I am from the coursewhisper.co where I help entrepreneurs who want to put the online courses together and create something great so they can always, I can always help them through that process. That's great. And before we go into the main part of the interview, folks, I just want to quickly mention one of our great sponsors, and that's WP Fusion. And what is WP Fusion? Well, in your te techno stack, you've got, obviously you've got WordPress, but then you got a, you should have a CRM like Active Campaign or Drip. Um, but what WP Fusion does, it puts those two key parts of your techno stack on steroids, especially if you've got a membership website or e-commerce website, and it enables you to just to do the most amazing intelligence about who's coming to your website, and you can set up automatic drip campaigns, text messaging, whatever you... It just puts everything on steroids. Now, if that sounds interesting, and I suggest that you do go to the WP Fusion website and find out more, they're giving us an exclusive offer, which is 25%, and they don't offer that to anybody else, only to you, my beloved WP Tonic viewers and listeners. So if you use the coupon code WPTONIC or uppercase and you go to their website and buy any of those packages, you get 25% off. And I think Shane's already going to the website as we speak to get his discount. <laughs> uh, so there we go. Can't help it, can you? Uh, it's a great offer. I should, if you're using WordPress and you should be, I suggest you do that, actually. Uh, um, so let's start the conversation. Um, my mind had to start the conversation. So we're about WordPress and membership websites. So, you know, the, the big question me and Cindy gets is how do we get more people to our website and how do we build community? And I think a major part of that in 2018 is video. And you're the expert. <laughs> you know, if you were starting, thinking about starting a membership site, how would video be in your plans? Um, yeah, I love that question. And I think that um, if I was to start from scratch today um, and I had a goal of eventually uh, selling an online course, having a membership site, I would try to go as many steps back and think about the path. Uh, I think a lot of people call it the customer journey of what would take you eventually to that final destination. You know, there's one of the most famous personal development books of all time is The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. And one of those habits is begin with the end in mind. So you wanna begin potentially with that individual who you love, you wanna help, there's that result you wanna get from them and they've already invested money with you and they're inside of your course, they're inside of your membership site but like, what are the steps that it took to get there? And of course, there's a lot of steps that we could work backwards from, but one of those first steps would be awareness. Like they would have to actually know who you are and discover you in the first place um, so that they could eventually maybe get to know you a little bit better and then finally make it to that final destination uh, or at least that goal of, of joining your program. So for me, YouTube would absolutely be the platform I would focus on and here's why. YouTube is really different than the other social media platforms because it's a search engine. 
right? And a lot of people have said this, but it's the second largest search engine in the world, which means people go to Google first and second, they go to YouTube to say, you know, uh, how do I save money on my taxes or to say, um, how do I lose weight or to say, um, you know, how do I get, how do I work on my mindset or, you know, whatever it is, so whether you're a life coach or whether you help somebody with financial problems or relationship problems, um, or if you uh, help somebody put together a potato gun or you're, you know, creative or learn how to program uh, some software or learn how to use some software, whatever it is, YouTube is a search engine and that single fact is actually how I've built up my various channels and brands to now over a million subscribers across my various channels because I've always started with what is my target audience searching for? And I think a power tip here is that a lot of us have what you probably teach on and that's the curse of knowledge. The curse of knowledge is you assume everybody else kind of knows what you know and you also assume that your knowledge isn't valuable. But for everybody listening, your knowledge is a lot valuable than you even realize, a lot more valuable. Your knowledge is something that you've geeked out on, so you've studied it, you've like read the blogs, you've probably watched the videos, you've gone through the process, and then the curse of knowledge is like, yeah, but would anybody find this valuable? And I think we have a lot of misconceptions, you know, about that starting point. And so what I've learned is that sometimes people, they actually don't start early enough with questions, you know, like the question could be how to use WordPress, but like that's very down the road. Like you, somebody initially might even be like, um, well, how do you even create a course? So how do you create a membership site? But that's even, that's way down the road. Like how to even knowing what that is, even before that, it could be something as simple as how do you make money online? You know, or what are some side hustles that you could do to make money during the summer? So I guess what I'm trying to get at is, that we really wanna understand the psychology and the customer journey of our target audience. And we wanna meet them at those various points in their journey, eventually realizing that step by step, brick by brick, they might come to a place where now they're like, okay, uh, I do wanna join the course, I wanna join the program, but there's so many steps in between. Yeah, I just love it. I, I think just to paraphrase, I think what you're trying to say is, you want to become their the voice, the expert in their journey. So when they're at different stages, you're one of the leading resources that they turn to. Is that what you're trying to say? Absolutely. And what I love about search traffic is it's even different. There's a lot of ways you could reach new people, paid traffic, you could do Facebook ads, um, you could you know, do uh, all kinds of different things online, you could collaborate with somebody. The power of search traffic is kind of based on the quote, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Search traffic is not interruptive. A lot of Facebook marketing is actually interruption marketing. And Seth Godin talked about that years ago. It can work, but you're just showing up. Somebody wasn't thinking about you. You're just, boom, you're showing up in their newsfeed. The power of search traffic is someone goes to YouTube and they've got a problem. They've got a pain point. For everybody listening, write down the problems and pain points your target audience has at different stages too. Maybe it's too complex. You've got to simplify them. So now that individual types that in and you show up on the other side of search like, hey, I'm here to help, but they came to you. So if we were to take this like offline, you could think about going door to door to try to market a product or a service. It's very interruption, right? You, somebody knocks on your door, you're like, why are you interrupting my day? You're trying to sell me something. This is almost like someone coming to your door, like knocking on your door and saying like, hey, do you have a product, a service, a solution to help me? Because when that person's in that moment of asking a question, asking an inquiry, they type that in. And if you do it right, now your video shows up on the other side of search. So what I've learned is that I've tried to put as many videos, individual videos on the other side of those search inquiries of my target audience. And so then at the moment where they're like, well, what's the best camera for YouTube? There's my video. And so they can then meet me and I, I didn't come to them. I didn't push anything. They came to me like looking for that. And they're like, wow, this is helpful. This information's illuminated. It's even creating more questions than we think about the customer journey. So we've learned what's the best camera for YouTube, but then they might be like, well, shoot, now I'm, you let me know that I also need lighting. Okay, so what's the best lighting? Okay, well now I got a camera and lighting. Well, how do you actually get views on YouTube? Okay, so there's another thing. Well, how do you actually put your channel art together? And like, it's like this funnel, right? It's just, um, um, so many different things that they can begin learning about. And I think 
an important thing here has been taught by a lot of people in our space, which is um, really giving free content up front or RIA, get, getting people results in advance. Just as they, they meet you, you're helping them and you're building that relationship. So then it can go to the next stage. Like, hey, if you enjoyed this, you might wanna check out a longer training that I have. And then if they enjoyed that, but then maybe you want to join our membership community and it all kind of comes back to, I think, understanding the customer journey and understanding really getting deep into the psychology of your target audience and the various stages and pain points they would experience along the way. And then just helping people on that journey. That's great. Over to you, Cindy. Yeah. Well, I think you answered one of the questions I was going to ask you because, um, you know, often people are concerned that they're going to be giving away too much information, that the people won't want to take their course because they've already given everything away for free. So, what, you know, what do you say with, to those people that have that reservation about how much information do I actually share prior to getting access to my course? Yeah, a couple opportunities I think you have. I think one of the things you could do, again, if you were to start with the end in mind, your course is, is should be, in my opinion, it should be all of the information they need, step-by-step, step, easy to follow, and it's the right ingredients in the right order, right? And it's comprehensive. So if that's your final course, even if you were to map that out first before you started creating your videos, which I don't necessarily think has to be everybody's path, but if you were to do that, your fear is, well, if I give away free information, they won't need the course, but what I've learned is then what you can do over here on social media, LinkedIn, your blog, whatever you want to do, is you can give away pieces of the course, but what you're not actually giving away is all of the right ingredients in all of the right, and, and it also makes sense because for me, one of our courses, Video Ranking Academy, it takes almost two days to go through it. And so to upload two days worth of content onto YouTube would just be so much. And to be honest, it actually probably wouldn't even be consumed because I think people undervalue free. Yeah, they really do. And I think that that can be a mindset block, like, will people pay for this? But half of the reason we need to charge for really good information is because the transformation is also in the transaction. When people put skin in the game, when people actually step up, they get better results themselves. Because I know you and myself included, haven't we all downloaded eBooks, PDFs? you know, free videos that we never even opened because they weren't free. But if we've ever stepped up and did our credit card, you know, type that in. If we put some skin in the game, that puts more value and more responsibility on us. But anyway, for those, so I think when you break down pieces of the puzzle, pieces of the pie, and it's not even like you're withholding, it's just the fact that something like YouTube or LinkedIn video is more conducive to a three minute video an eight minute video, just a piece where someone can see, wow, like, you're good for it. I see you've got the answers. I see you can help me. I'm, I'm interested. I want to go deeper and you can add value. And it's kind of like letting someone test, test drive the car as well. It's letting somebody sample, uh, you know, the, 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 the coffee or sample the beverage at the restaurant. It's letting some, and then you're like, wow, I want that. Give me the whole thing, man. That tastes delicious. I would love, so you kind of are giving out those samples. You're adding free value. But the one other thing I would say is that personally, I am okay with um, this fact. I actually believe that if somebody wanted to like learn everything I know, they could study my body of work and, and get it all for free. Meaning they could listen to this podcast, dig into my oldest videos, read every email newsletter, go through every social media post. The problem though is it, it's, it's social media. We're just pumping it out. So it's kind of disorganized. It's, it's whatever. So, so for some people, I'm okay with the fact that if you've got that much time on your hands and that much drive and that much diligence, you may never do business with me and that's great. But of course we know that there are people and I'm the same way. I want the shortcut. I want you to give me the right steps in the right order without the intro on there every time. Show me how to do it step by step, break it all down. So I think what's exciting about the world we're living in is that for everybody listening, you can serve kind of two groups of people. Guess what? Some people will never pay for your course. Some people will never jo join your membership site. To be honest, some people will download pirated versions of your course, depending on how big your brand gets. You were never going to reach those people in the first place. And I think the mentality, in the sense of they maybe never would have done business with you, but I actually even find it somewhat flattering that someone would even consume my content and so that's one group of people. But then there's this whole other group of people that they, they're smart, to be honest, in my opinion. 
there, if just like you do anything else, before trying to navigate through a treacherous jungle, you would buy a map. Before going through it, you know, a, a trying to climb Mount Everest, you don't go alone. You hire a guide. You pay for a map. You learn from the people who've gone that way before that can also help you skip all the pitfalls, avoid all the, uh, the, the challenges. So if someone goes the free road of just free content online, it's going to be a slow road. You could get there, but it might take them one, two, three, four, five years of just trying to piece everything together. Then your course is like, look, this is the shortcut. It's the fast track. It's everything you need to know, do it in the right order. And it's going to save you years of the mistakes I've made, the pitfalls I've done. And so you choose. And actually at the end of like a webinar, which is where we would sell a lot of our courses, I let people know that I'm like, look, you could go this other way. It'll be more painful. It'll be longer. It'll actually probably be more expensive because your time is so valuable. But look, you might not even have, I'm thinking you might be 16. You don't have, the, all you have is time. And like, you don't want to play video games. You just want to watch content all night. Great. You're serving that individual. But there's so many people that are going to say, yes, give me the shortcut. And I think that's a misconception entrepreneurs have. But once you go all in with that, like you'll be surprised. There are a lot of people who will want your content, your course and your membership site. Oh, that's great. We're going to go for our break. We'll be back and we'll be going through all this interesting stuff with Shane. We'll be back in a few moments, folks. We're coming back. We've got the master of YouTube with us. Uh, um, so, um, would, would you actually boost some of your videos and give Google some more money? They don't exactly need it, do they? But, uh, um, <laughs> uh, but would you actually, and they've done some big changes to AdWords when it comes to YouTube lately. They've, you know, they've changed the interface. They've been changing the, um, the editor itself, haven't they? Uh, um, but would you actually boost, would you cough up some money and boost some of your videos if you're trying to get more subscribers really? So there's really two, two points I would have here. The first one is actually, it's going to be a contradiction too, because the answer is yes and no. So the first one is actually no. And, and here's why I think that paid traffic, in my opinion, is best used as gasoline on a fire that's already burning. And so some people think, well, paid traffic could be a good way for me to get exposure. Um, but I actually think that it's important to, to get, to prove your content, to prove its impact, to, to prove that people care without paid traffic first. And then paid, paid traffic can be an accelerant. But even saying that, most of where we do, we spend money on ads, whether that's Facebook ads, YouTube ads, Google AdWords. Um, we, uh, we mostly do it if it's leading to something that actually is for sale at the end because paid ads give you an awesome opportunity to track ROI. You can track the entire thing to see if it's profitable or not. And it makes most sense if you can invest a dollar and get a dollar fifty out or get two dollars out. And what's when you build that sequence, it also does provide organic growth because you are getting in front of new people, but you're also getting in front of new people in a profitable way because there's actually a business model associated and you've kind of connected the dots. What I've learned is that most ads spent for us on YouTube or Facebook just to just grow, just to just get views, just to get subscribers have either A, led to some subscribers, but they haven't been that active. They haven't been that bought in. Because to be honest, that is a little bit of interruption marketing. It is. It's like, I wasn't looking for this, but now you're just pushing it on me. Um, but the second way, when I said that, so it's kind of no, I would say build organically your subscribers by putting out valuable content, by collaborating, by putting out, um, you know, SEO, search-based videos and, and really adding value. But the second thing is there are a couple ways to do it. And if you're going to go on YouTube and do some paid traffic, I would say focus only on display ads, um, which would not be the in-stream ads. So in-stream ads, right, you can choose to skip it or not. So an in-stream ad would be best if you want to invite somebody to a free webinar or to download something free, and that's going to lead to some sort of a sale later because you can track ROI. And if it's profitable, you can scale it. Whereas the display ads, they can show up right at the top of search. You basically can buy your way into that first search spot, just like you can on Google itself in the ad section. And also over on the side, you can have a display ad where the suggested videos are. So if you've got a strong title, polarizing maybe, very interesting, creates curiosity, 
you've got a strong thumbnail that of a topic that is a little bit broad and something that could reach your target audience, but really get people to click through as they look over there like, what's that about? And they click through. I think we've seen, and, and some of our peers and people we work with have seen success of getting organic growth, if you will, or just subscriber growth, viewership growth from doing display ads. And what can happen is it's a combination because you're paying for that ad to show up in suggested videos, but as it gets more views, more likes, more watch time, more engagement, it also takes on a life of its own. And on YouTube, minutes matter most. It's not subscribers or views that YouTube cares about the most. It's actually video consumption. They tell you your watch time, how many minutes we're watching your channel. So if that content's interesting and people are watching it, you will actually get a lot of free promotion, right? You can start showing up in suggested videos on YouTube and display ads are a way to, if you will, prime a video, get it out there a little bit. And still, it would be gasoline on one of your videos or a piece of content you create that's already good, it's already resonating a little bit, you've already got some feedback, you've already maybe got some organic comments and you see like people are enjoying this or it's a really good conversation starter. And now we're gonna scale that by doing paid ads. That's great, Cindy. Yeah, I um, it, that's so good to hear in terms of getting your perspective on that. So, so here's here's another challenge that I face with the clients that I work with. So they have this idea, okay, they're ready, they want to take a YouTube channel to promote themselves. They want to have video as part of their courses, but they're nervous about being on camera. Um, so, from somebody like you, what is your advice around people who have have reservations about being on camera and and what are some things that people can do to be more natural or, or maybe convey who they are better on camera? Mm. Number one, um, you really do just have to do it. You know, Nike said it, just do it. And I think it's funny because I know that, you know, they say public speaking, which is similar to being on camera or the same thing, is one of the greatest fears people face in period, you know, period. And so the reality is though, just like anything, anything you do for the first time is usually scary and you're usually not very good at it the first time. So your first videos are gonna be your worst videos. You just have to accept that fact. Mine were, I don't want anybody to see the first videos I made. They were terrible, right? You know, over time people say, wow, you're confident on camera. Wow, you seem to, you know, you could communicate well. It's cause I've been doing it since 2003 and I've been doing it a lot. You'd probably be more confident than me if you've uploaded as many videos if you've done it as much as me. So at, initially, you just have to resolve to punch fear in the face, punch perfectionism in the face, and press record. Now number two, practically, I think one of the best ways to do this comes from an example of actually the Chief Operation Officer of Think Media. She's been on our team for three years. Her name's Heather. She's a homeschool mom. She's a, a, an incredible marketer. She's a clarity coach. And uh, you know, three years ago though, she'd never been on video. And we actually met on Twitter, and one of the reasons she wanted to work together was she wanted to learn this video thing. She's terrified of video. She didn't have the confidence to be on video. Um, and now, in addition to what she does with Think Media, she has a homeschool channel called The Homeschool House. Over 10,000 subscribers. Um, she's working on her course uh, to, to help beginner homeschool moms get going. And, and uh, it's, things are going really well for her. But here's what she did. And I would encourage listeners there's, uh, to use stories. At the time she used Snapchat, which are you know video stories, 10 seconds each. Now we have Instagram stories, 15 seconds each. And so what she committed to, she'd never been on camera, totally terrified. She committed to six months of daily uploads on her Snapchat. And here's what she'd do. The reason they call them stories is because they need to be a story. They should be, have a beginning, a middle, and an end. So she would typically do three Snapchat stories. And again, you could do this on Instagram or Snapchat or even just anywhere. You could just record it on your phone. So she would record one, she'd hold her phone up and say, hey, Heather here today, I'm gonna to be talking about the three biggest mistakes new homeschool moms make. Finish that, record the second one, and she would do that second one, that third one. And by the way, on Snapchat, you could play it back before you post it. She'd be like, I hated that one, delete it. She might've been doing it 30 times the first day. You know, the second one, she's like, ah, I said that weird, she deleted it. But here's, what was she doing? She was practicing. She was just showing up, getting used to it. Day one, terrible. You know, week number two, she still hates her voice, doesn't, doesn't feel confident. Month number two, she's still, I'm kind of getting a groove for it, but she just kept showing up. And here was the goal. She wasn't trying to get Snapchat followers. In fact, she didn't want anyone to wa be watching. But what she was doing was she was practicing in public and she was committed to the process 
of learning and growing and just getting more confident on camera, discovering her voice. And she did this for six months. Then she posted her first YouTube video. Now she'd been you know, working with us. So she'd gone through some of our courses. So she came out of the gate as if like overnight success. Her first YouTube video did really great. It was ranking in search. So she's getting traffic and uh, she's growing her channel. And people could have said, wow, you just came out of nowhere. You know what I mean? Like you just, you were born with it. But under the surface, that was not the case at all. She had gone through six months, right, of practicing, getting through that uncomfortable stage. And then eventually when she shot a longer YouTube video, that confidence was there. So for everybody listening, I know you're scared. And I know you might have that deer in the headlights look. But you have to commit to just doing it over and over. It, it could be setting up your phone on a pile of shoe boxes or a little tripod from Amazon, hitting record and committing to record a video every single day. And guess what? You don't even have to post it, but watch it back. And, and, and you might be cringing at yourself. That's fine. I think, you know, we all grew up with answering machines. You remember our answering machines from our landlines and some, maybe you left an answering machine for a family member. You left a message, but you beat them home. So then you played it back and then you were like, do I really sound like that? And then people be like, yeah, this is how you sound. You're like, ah, I hate my voice. You know, like you just got to get through all that awkward season. But I really believe that you have to commit to the process of repetition, just like anything else. The first time you do anything is the worst time you do anything. But over time, your confidence will grow. And video was so important for every entrepreneur listening that I encourage you to bite the bullet today. Start that practice process today because it might take you six months to really feel confident but you will then be positioned to dominate your industry, add value to your customers, grow your brand, and leverage, I believe, the most powerful content format on the internet, online video. Um, and then when people are stunned by how confident you are, you'll be like, you don't know how I was practicing in the background, man. I've been shooting these videos and I've had six months of some stuff I never want anybody to see, but now I'm ready to go public with this. That's great. We're going to wrap it up for the podcast part of the show, folks. Hopefully Shane's going to agree to stay on for another five, 10 minutes. Let's give us some bonus content, which you'll be able to see on the WP Tonic website and YouTube channel. Uh, um, Shane, um, first of all, um, how can people get hold of you and learn more about what you're up to and what your team's up to? Yeah. So um, if anybody needs anything at all, SeanCannell.com, that's S E A N c-a-n-n-e-l-l.com and uh, we have our various YouTube channels a lot of free content on think media about helping people with cameras uh, what lighting but guess what your smartphone it's all you need you have enough to get started we do recommend a few accessories you know maybe a plug-in mic a little bit of lighting or, or things like that so that's all on our website and think media and then we also have a weekly interview show called video influencers um, I started that channel uh, with the co-founder of Video Influencers, and we uh, recently wrote a book called YouTube Secrets. And so that's out now. Um, and that's also at tubesecretsbook.com, T-U-B-E secretsbook.com, and a great resource for people who let, really want to leverage YouTube, which is by far the dominant video platform on the internet right now. Incredibly healthy, 1.9 billion monthly active users logged in with a Gmail account, uh, expanding to YouTube TV, continuing to innovate and update their platform. Um, very healthy, mobile, smart TVs, desktops. YouTube is doing great. And uh, a lot of people I need to be leveraging the power of YouTube to get more traffic and awareness to uh, their content and their courses. So that's YouTube secrets. Amazon all around the world, Australia, Mexico, uh, all the different Amazons. You can pick up either the physical or the digital book. And the audio book also comes out uh, in November of 2018. That's great. And Cindy, how do people get hold of you and learn more about what you're up to? Well, if, uh, if people are looking to create a course and need a little help around how to put it all together and what, how to avoid that curse of uh, knowledge that Sean was talking about, they can uh, come to thecoursewhisperer.com and, and shoot me a line. Yeah. And if you're looking for help with WordPress, your membership site, a learning management system, my passion is helping entrepreneurs and education in general. Um, that's what really gives me a buzz, helping people who want to educate and build a great online business. So if you're looking help, you can go just to the website. And if you want to chat with me, you can book it for free. And I'm there as a great resource. We're closing the podcast part of the show. And hopefully next week we have another great guest that will help you build a great online business. We'll see you next week, folks. Bye. Thanks, Sean. Thank you. 
So, Sean, um, I've got, um, I want to ask you this question, but if you don't want to answer it, I understand. Um, you kids get worried there. Uh, um, no, I don't think so. Um, looking back on your business career, what has been the most difficult moment in it? Um, and what did you, how did you deal with it and what did you learn from it? Yeah, I think, uh, there's been two, but, but I mean, the, the biggest one for me is, uh, it's pretty personal, but happy to share it. You know, I've done a lot of things over the years. Um, and as an entrepreneur, I've been, uh, growing and scaling our business really over the last three years, but, um, and we've had extraordinary success, but of course, even once you kind of go public and you start showing up on people's radars, there's so much behind the scenes that had happened and, and led up to that point. And so for me, um, 2009 was the uh, hardest year of my life. And, um, you know, I've been doing video since 2003, but in 2009, we had a convergence of events that hit our life that were um, really heavy. So my wife and I had been married for a few years and, and it was the housing recession here in the US. And so we had a couple homes, we had a rental property, they, the, the, the tenants there lost their jobs during that time. So they can't afford that. Um, and during this time, my wife actually had gotten very sick. She'd gone on a trip to the Philippines, gotten very sick. We didn't know what was happening. Um, she's losing all this weight and eventually got to 82 pounds and she almost died. And she ended up in the hospital for uh, six days. So this is in 2009, we're losing homes and we we're dual income, she's no longer able to work. And then also at the time I was in a position actually at a church uh, on doing church media and video production, and all these different things. And I also had a side video production business and uh, that was also falling apart. There was some senior leadership that um, just had some things that didn't go well. So our jobs disrupted, we're losing our homes. My wife's health is hanging in the balance. And I spent six days um, by her bedside there in the hospital. And of course, this is such a dark time, right? And heavy. And I'm thinking, God, why is all this happening? And I'm also thinking, man, what am I going to do as a, as a leader? I, and I was feeling challenged that I need to really step up as, as a leader, as a provider, as an entrepreneur. And I think for everybody listening, you know, I really believe that reasons come before results. And that I know we all want to grow and we all want to make money and, and impact and reach more people. But sometimes everybody wants that. And, and if that's all we want, but we haven't connected it deep to our reasons, we don't necessarily have the fuel or the drive to get over the hardest seasons of growing as an entrepreneur. Because one promise I have for everybody listening, right, is there's going to be challenges, there's going to be times when you want to quit, there's going to be discouragement, there's going to be times when you want to give up. And so for me, it was those six days that I began to tap into such clarity about a new level of drive, a new level of stepping up. And a new level and determination to say, I really got to see this, make this thing work. You know, for me, the reasons then, family for me was right at the center. Faith is another big one. But I started thinking, I need to make money online. And I want to have a business that's on my own terms where I can work where I want, when I want, when I want, you know, with who I want. Why? Because what's our future going to look like? Like, I want to be home with my wife. I want to be able to take care of her. I'm not sure what it's going to look like when we try to raise kids. So we really need, I need this thing to work for that reason. And I know everybody listening, it's maybe you're thinking about some things where, again, I think fame, fortune, followers, that's all cool. That stuff's good. But I think there needs to be something deeper. And when you really tap deep into those reasons, since that time, man, we've had some setbacks. You know, we've had some, some time where we've spent thousands of dollars or tens of thousands of dollars on a project and just had a crash. You know, you spend some money. On, on ads or something and a campaign doesn't work and it could be really deflating and really discouraging. But for every season since then, as an entrepreneur, when I've wanted to give up, I, I always look back to my reasons. And, you know, by the way, you know, Sonia, we, we have a new surgery coming up. She does have a chronic illness, my wife, but she's doing good. And we're thriving in the midst of struggle. We're thriving in the midst of challenges. And I've learned that, of course, everybody has something. Everyone's probably got a family member or some kind of a, an illness themselves or a child or something going on. And I really believe that as entrepreneurs, we can overcome anything that comes our way. But when we really get anchored to that resolve of, of pressing through those challenges. And so that was, it. that was for me, I think it was actually going deeper into a level of purpose, going deeper into a level of clarity and going deeper into a level of, of um, having reasons that can help push me through the hardest seasons we face as entrepreneurs. 
Wow. Uh, thank you so much for sharing that. I feel as a human being, I've got to kind of respond to that, really. Um, as a child, I, I've got dyslexia, actually. And um, also one of these, um, was one of those children that, that um, liked to ask, answer questions. So um, my te- I was not very popular with my teachers because I could answer all the questions, but I couldn't do the written exams. And that didn't go down too well. So they made my life a bit of a misery. Um, because what you don't understand, you tend to reject, don't you? Um, so I've always had to be entrepreneur because I've always had to make my own, um, my own world in a way. So, but also, I, like you, I, I'm a person of faith. Um, but faith that isn't challenged isn't really worth much, is it? Really? So it's only when you're really challenged do you know the worth of your faith, really, isn't it? I agree, 100%. So I think we're going to wrap up today's show. We've got a bit philosophical, but I thought that was a, something told me that you, were, you wanted that question to be asked, asked you, so I'll go by my gut, really. Um, so we're going to wrap up this show, and we'll be back next week, folks. Thanks so much. Bye. <laughs>